Yeah, I'ma kill you in a second if, if I, I have to. to. Use my mind as a weapon when I blast, blast you. Put the basics in the basement. All right, guys, so welcome back. Uh, episode four of the PT Performance Podcast. We've got the host, uh, Richo. We've got Nate. Yo. Guys, welcome in. Welcome back. Sorry, a bit of lag just there. Just missed you. Bit of lag. Uh, Nate, talk us through what we're talking about today, mate. Well, episode four. So we've started to go through finding niche, uh, starting to get a bit of accountability of what stuff you need to do when you get in. Now you're in, now you're happening. Now we're talking about how to get your business and more importantly, how to stay in business. Because I don't know the statistics, Mooney, you will know, but the average industry lifetime of a current PT in 2018 is what? Mate, Australia-wide, you're looking at nine to 12 months would be the high end of that success rate. Um, Obviously, facility to facility changes, but at a global, you'd be saying if you made it to the nine months, you're on your, you're looking good. If you made it to 12 months, you're in a a small percentile. Yeah, look, and if you're in the small percentile, 12 months, you're still shit house. So really, you have to get here longer than 12 months. We're trying to keep you in the game. You wanted to get it for the first place for something new. So we're going to start with how to get yourself in business. Now, of course, a lot of the information I think we're going to talk about tonight, boys, you can correct me if I'm wrong, is going to definitely apply if you are in a commercial space. Uh, Possibly could apply definitely if you're in a studio or anything like that, but we're not really talking about opening your own gym, opening your own facility just yet. We're talking about you being brand new, starting to operate your business out of somebody else's, as is the most popular model at the moment. Yeah? Absolutely. Yep. I mean, it'll apply to... With, within a scale, yeah, it can apply to other areas as well. Obviously, you just got to take into account if you've got a studio. Yeah, yeah, I think. Company. But like, if, yeah, just a, the most basic outset, most of you guys aren't really going to be forking out a lot of money for trying to set up a studio for something you've never done before. You're not going to take that risk. God, I hope yeah. you're not going to take that risk. <laughs> uh, so let's just get in with actually how to start and, start and stay in business. Now, Mooney, have you got the, have you got the notes there? Because I'm going to be perfectly honest. I've just lost them. So... Uh, the notes for today, yeah. So yeah, basically, the notes because I'm hopeless. No, nah, we're gonna fly. We're gonna fly. Uh, fly free on this one today, mate. Because my screen's on the on the blink there. So, what we're gonna be talking about is okay. First of all, guys, let's lead it off. What's some uh, successful campaigns that you? Let's let's take it back a step. Think back to when you first started as a PT. We all tried a whole bunch of different things to generate leads and to get converted uh, to convert from lead to client. What's your go to? What's your go-to? Start with you, Richard. What's your go-to when it's time to generate a lead and then, and then we'll get on to the conversion part? Well, go-to, obviously, if we're talking about the commercial setting is when new clients join up at the gym, uh, depending on the gym and what sort of setup they have, they normally have some sort of kickstart setup. So that's where uh, the gym passes you a lead of someone who's just come and signed it into the gym and you're either giving them one up to three complimentary sessions. Um, obviously that's your, that's your chance to then convert them into one of your uh, clients. So for me, I find that's normally one of the easiest ways. Um, if I need to work on my retention, I just go back into the leads with whatever gym I'm at. So like I said, some of them, they give you three sessions. Uh, the gym I'm at currently now, you just do a 15 minute induction of the gym. So from off the back of that, I just offer, offer a complimentary session. Um, while I'm walking them through, finding out what they want to achieve, why they signed up, what their goal is. Um, and then uh, off the back of that complimentary session, normally helping them achieve what they wanted to is normally how I end up signing them up. So for me, the best one is the um, off the back of the induction or the initial three consultations that they get when they first sign up at a gym. So pretty much all commercial spaces will always offer something like that. Um, and to me, that ended up being my bread and butter. At the start, my conversion was, when I very first started, was probably three in 10, because at the start, bad, you're crap and you don't know anything. Yep. You don't know how to sell. You don't know what you're talking about. And then now, as you get more experienced, now it's probably nine in 10. Yep. Nine in 10, I take through, I'll sign on. So, as a, as so a- that, was my, that was probably my first go to and that's that's one where you're gonna pump up most of the leads through at the start when you first start in the commercial setting. So probably the better the best you can get at that early, the better the better success rate you're gonna have from the start. So now Richo, as an experienced PT that converts roughly eight, nine out of ten, 
how much value do you, do you put on kickstart leads today? Oh, massive. Yeah. Massive. Okay. Like if, I, if I need to pick up some new clients and I know that's probably my number one way to do it. I reckon in my experience, there's a direct correlation between the P2s who think they're a waste of time and their short length of stay in the industry. A hundred percent. Yeah. And now the other thing I'm going to say as well is I'm especially down for at the start when a lot of people aren't is putting in more time, the more contact time that you have with someone, the more rapport you can build and the better chance you have of signing them on. So if you just give them one half an hour session and you cut it short, then they're not going to think they're giving them any value. So I always undersell. So I always say, I'll give you a complimentary half hour or 40 minute session and I always take an hour with them. Yep. And then if I feel like I need another session with them, I'll offer them a second session. So I've had the induction or the first meeting, then I've given that, that second session. And then the more times you can meet with them, the more rapport you can build, the better chance you have of converting. So if I take someone for two or three sessions, I'm almost hundred percent guaranteed to be able to put them on the books. Yep. Okay, um, I'd say most of the commercial. Because I know that that's every time I meet with them, it increases my chance of putting them on. So instead of looking at it as, oh, it's now free, it's another hour of working to a client who I know is increasing the chance of signing on. Sure. So um, I've got no problem at all in giving complimentary sessions. And you know what? I love training people. I love what I do. And I love helping people and teaching people. So to me, that's not, I, I love that. I'm not a huge, I'm going to be honest, I'm not a huge caller. I hate talking on the phone. I hate it. I hate it. I don't know many people that do like talking on the phone. Nate's one because he just likes hearing the sound of his yeah, own voice. Yeah, boy. But, <laughs> um, I prefer to just do my thing in person. So for me, that's always worked better for me than cold calling. But that's because um, I, I feel like I get to teach someone in that time. I feel like I get to build more rapport with them in that time. And that's what's worked best for me to be able to pick someone up. And you make so an important got, like, point there, Richard. <laughs> You make an important point. You've got to know your strength. You know, just taking it back a step to saying, hey, you don't like the call, so you do face-to-face. You've got to know your strength. And if your strength is being in front of someone, you want to spend as little time on that phone as possible and more in front of them. Whereas someone like that, if your strength is on the phone, then you know, want to take that time, slow that down, get as much information out of that phone call as you can. So yeah, because he better tell them. them on the phone because once they meet him in person, they're off him. So it's just... Yeah. Cool. No, you got nothing from him. You'll go to... <laughs> If I ignore you, you'll go away. <laughs> Can I, is what, my turn yet? What's your go-to? Look, oh, look, I think number one is the one that Richo spoke about there, but I think the very close second to that is you literally hang around like a bad smell at the gym. I don't mean following people. I mean you literally be there. We've already discussed this at length, yep. the fact that if you knew you have to be around and not wait just for leads to come to you, you actually have to be hanging around and be, be seen and either be training people, be putting stuff away, be spotting people, just be generally present yep. as such on the gym floor. You don't have to like go up to awkwardly and talk to everybody if that's not your thing. That's totally cool. But you have to be seen. I mean, we've got the experience. So it's not really hard for us now. But we've broken down that barrier. We can just kind of be there and muck around and do whatever else. And then all of a sudden people see that we know what we're doing because we elude this confidence and we get the leads and we get the business kind of via organic osmosis mm. if that's even really a thing <laughs> science people i think <laughs> I, I really do think a lot of people are undervaluing the fact that they need to hang around the gym and be there because probably they're hearing that from other people that it didn't work yep because there's and many people, people who've done it before them and they did it for a few days and it didn't work out yep. well, the, the, other, the other thing to that is you got people now, everyone wants to be a fucking online entrepreneur and only work five hours a week. Yep. So people want to get in and get back home so they can post their photo of them on their laptop at the beach going, oh, look at my look life, at my look at my fucking life. Yep, yep. Like, wow. and, you know what? And, and they're missing a massive opportunity because they've got yeah. the attention. And, and I, I have PTs that ask me all the time about the conversion to online PT. We had a brief chat about it before the show tonight. You can't do any of that until you've established yourself in the real world as a trainer you know you've got this opportunity to build hours and hours and hours of ridiculous content whether you've got a pt client or whether you're just in the gym interacting with gym members so why go home and fuck around and sit in front of your laptop and pretend you're living the life when those hours could be spent in the gym creating that contact points getting to know people and them getting to know you as well yeah 
online con- online coaching is a viable option for a certain kind of clientele, but your skill set as a trainer will only get better when you actually coach. Yep. Like you actually have to coach. So you actually know how to have to cue things, how to move around things. There's, this, there's a level to this game. 100%. You can write a program and send it to someone via Excel and that's all well and good. But this is the actual art of being able to coach and sell yourself as to why paying you money is going to get them to their, their goals a bit quicker. Yep. So and that, we can probably build on that with what Richo's saying with like, how do I get business? I, I originally got out of, I jumped out of this industry a while ago, about eight years ago for a period of six months or whatever, because I was in quote my words, I was sick of being everybody's health and fitness for them. I wanted them to take a bit of responsibility, a bit of the right attitude, a bit of the wrong attitude, because I got sick of them, you know, not showing up and doing the work and whatever. But at the same time, I wasn't showing up and doing the work and putting enough care into the fact that their goals were now my goals because they were investing in me and get uh, and wanting me to get into the next level. The fact that they weren't getting there, I can put a little bit of blame on them, but I have to accept a lot of blame on myself. Yep. Because you're not coaching and getting them around the skill sets. To, they might not be listening. They might not be doing this. They might not be doing this. You can't just give up. And that's yep. what I did at that time. I gave up. As you get more, uh, as you get more in depth into this game, or further down the rabbit hole with this game, I feel naturally your level of care factor automatically goes up, mm. purely because of how long you've been doing this. It wouldn't, you wouldn't be doing this long if you didn't care, and I mean legitimately care to the point of where we got people sitting in front of us who aren't paying us money, and we're already planning shit out and giving them stuff like, oh, so I'd be doing this, 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 this. This is how I structure this. What do you reckon about that? And you're already starting to overcome obstacles straight away. They can see the investment you're putting in them straight away. Why would they not want to continue that? Hmm. You're well, not said, holding no... anything back. You're just giving it all. Hmm. And in the fact, in giving it all, you could look, look. <laughs> there was there was a there was a few years ago where there was a big internet guy, not a fitness guy, but like an internet marketer guy who would literally even even. Eben Pagan, Mooney, you know that guy's name? Doesn't ring a bell, okay. sorry. Huge dude. Eben Pagan. He, he was the guy that started the whole give away your best content. Right. Give away everything for free. PTs, here's the thing. I could literally give you the fucking roadmap for free to your inbox right now, and you're not going to do it. Yep. You could pay me three grand a week for the same roadmap, and then you might end up doing it. It's the same fucking thing. People want to invest because they want to be around you. They want you involved because you care. You could give them the plan for free and you could give them the exact same thing when they're paying you more and more money, but they want you involved. That's the big difference. You've got to show them why you can be involved. Yeah, that's a great point, man. And I think that's something where we talked or where you mentioned earlier, there's levels to the game. I think if it was a structured staircase you would see that pts get to that point i'm keen i'm busting ass i'm doing these kickstarts this is great i'm converting a couple they're getting some results i need some more and they kind of forget that they've to take that client to that next step is to get more involved is for them to understand that you are invested in them as much as you're asking in return and to be able to coach them through the next steps not just turn up and do my program yeah and i think this will segue nicely into like continuing to build like how do we build business and whatever like that right. let's say you're starting to get a couple of clients right and you want to keep building and keep going and keep going someone said this to me about three months ago and i'm looking for confirmation bias a bit here <clears throat> i hadn't really thought of it that much but we're putting all this time into getting new clients right i'm at five i'm at five clients to give me eight sessions i want to be at 20. 20, 20, 20, 20. And your focus is so much on getting that 20. Someone put it to me like this, and this might not be the absolute approach, but this is a good way to think about it. What if you just put all your effort, all of your focus and all of your resources into those five clients that yield in those eight sessions? You gave them everything. You bought into it all. Like You checked in with them all the time. You did what had to be done. You followed up. You played on their level. You, you made sure they were successful. You think your business would grow 
if those clients were successful and got the results? Exponentially, 100%. And it might not grow at the rate like super quick, right? Like I'm not saying just get a client and just follow them around like a stalker. I'm saying a lot of us are focused on getting more, 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 more when the more, more, more is right in front of us. Yes. When all of the old school coaches are talking about what differentiates the millions of us that do this job now between good and bad is the results we achieve, which is absolutely true because how many of us see marketing material of lose fat, tailored training, tailored nutrition, and I see no before and after photos. I see no testimonials. I see nothing because you literally blow sand. Like you just fucking blah. Everything you say is dust. It means nothing. There's no tangible evidence to any of this. And it just becomes same old, same old noise that you're hearing everywhere. But that's what it is. Yep. yep. All same old, same old noise. What happens if you had a plethora, like an absolute plethora of before and after photos, if that's your thing, of testimonials, of videos, like documenting all of these people's results, getting them to, to spread the word that they'll organically do if you get them results anyway. All that's of that stuff cool, right? is viable credibility. Let's take it back a step to the previous episode when we said you've just started out as a PT, you've saved up some coins, so you don't have the financial stress. Because you don't have that financial stress, that one kickstart you just converted to a paying client, you are giving them 100% of everything you know that's going to benefit them and their their chase, their results, right? You put all that effort into them, everyone around sees it. All the other members, all the other trainers, the client, everyone around the client's world sees that they're changing, they're improving, they're loving it, they're speaking all about you, you're speaking all about them. Then you get a second one. You pour out that same amount of attention and same amount of effort and same amount of work into that person. Now everything's doubled. Twice as many members are seen. Twice as many uh, trainers are watching. Now you've got their friends and family paying attention to what's going on. You're, You're working on the retention aspect, which means now you can build a business because it's retained business. It's not coming and going, coming and going, coming and going. People then come on board. You're also sharpening your tools. You're also learning your system or creating your system so that when the next person comes along, you're not winging it. You know that when I do this and I provide this service and I provide this feedback, people love it. People stay, replicate it. I have a question for Richo, if you know. What's your average retention of a current client? Uh, Roughly. Roughly probably 18 months, two years. Fuck. Is Yours big- is longer than mine. I reckon mine's about six to 12 months because I have a six month minimum at, at like absolute minimum now. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, if you had a retention of two years with a client, how many clients do you think you need before you'd be set, before you'd be full? Like this, this is what we're talking about. Mm. Like there's people, and I was one of them for a very, very long time, that you're always worried about where the next session is going to come from because you know these people are going to drop off. Yep. And they're going to drop off because you're not putting in the work as a coach to invest in their results because you didn't treat their results seriously from the start and therefore they didn't do it. So of course they're going to drop off. Whereas what happens if you treated their goal seriously from the start and you held them accountable and you were with them the entire way, how long would they stay with you? But also how many other people would they bring along for the journey? Yeah. Mate, let me jump back a step there, mate. What you just said. So you, you said you got a, a six month minimum, which is something I think is, fucking sensational instead of selling people on on x amount per hour or a per session kind of guy tell us a bit more about that man how do you what is your six month minimum so the minimum time can so the minimum time frame came about as a result of probably hearing it a lot of times and then it eventually just clicking of the fact that when you're selling something to somebody something that they want you can't break it down into such a finite detail as to how much they've got to pay you per hour. Mm. You've got to sell the the actual goal and the outcome. I mean, we know ourselves as everyone does in some aspect of their life, that good results take consistency and therefore take time. Most people that come to us (coughs) want to lose a couple of kilo, maybe a bit more, but most people eventually now, especially in the, the realm that I'm in, want to transform the way they look, and they want that to last. I think I'm good at my job, but I don't think I'm good enough to have such of an impact in like an eight or a 12 week that I can go back in two, two, five, ten 10 years and they'll look exactly the same. I need more time. I even think six months is probably too short, but I've got to give it something to kind of number one, pre-qualify to make sure these people are serious about the results. They don't hear six months and go, oh, that's a long time. Yeah. yeah. And number two, 
I've got to know that I can plan something out enough and put enough work in enough effort in that they're going to see it through. Yep. And make because it lifelong. Unfortunately, like there is that part where you put all that work in and then people bail, which is simply just a part of what we deal with. I get it. But you've got to show them that things take time and that you need them to be serious for a certain amount of time as well. Does that lose me business? Absolutely. Absolutely it loses me business all the time. People often don't want to put up with my shit for 60 minutes, let alone six months. <laughs> But if I get that six months, I get the transformations that I've been getting. I have a couple of transformations last year that were great. And those transformations honestly carry me through and bring me most of my result, my referrals now. Yeah. Like two or three, really. So that's it. And that's from a, that's from a six month minimum investment of everything. That's programming, diet, training. Some of those guys, some of those guys honestly had minimums of 12 weeks at the time. But because of their own mindset and the way they view their goals, it just organically ran longer. Nice, nice. My, the okay. six months is a pre-qualification thing for me now. So what I'm going to go back, I'm going to go back to some lead gen stuff now. So Kickstart, we all agree that Kickstarts are super valuable. If you're a PT working out of a commercial gym and you think Kickstarts are a waste of time, I'll see you in the barista lounge pretty soon because it's probably where you Kickstarts you're are probably the most valuable thing. And you've got to realize you're not going to get paid for those. Yep. More often than not. Yep. If your gym pays you for them, even 20 bucks, you're laughing yep. but you're America, probably not going to get paid for that this is like this is like a, a pre-qualifier for you are you serious about this kind of career yep. and like we said this at the start because you're only going to be getting paid for three hours these complimentary hours and sessions that you're doing make up like we talk about do 40 hours a week yep they make help fill up the gaps 40 these hours make up those 40 at the start yep so all you've got at the time is all you've got at the start to give is time that's, you have that's you have all of that other stuff because you're not working anywhere else. Yep. So you should have all the time in the world to give these sessions out. Mm. True. True. You should. And obviously, the more the more those forty hours turn into paid ones, obviously the less complimentary ones you have to do. Yep. But at the start, a lot of them are going to be complimentary because you're not getting paid for any of the start. Now here's the part of the kickstarts I want to talk to you guys about. This is something that for years, ten plus years, but I talk to people about their kickstarts. Their biggest challenge is at what point during the kickstart do they present the price? Start. Now, personally, exactly. Personally, for me, it's welcome. My name is Chris. You know, blah, blah, blah. We spoke about this. We're coming here to do your initial consultation. Before we get started, I want to go through a couple of packages that I offer. This is what we do. This is how we do it. Cool. That's out of the way. Now let's talk about you. We build up what they're looking for, plan their, plan their journey out. We'll get the three sessions done, right? Gives you an opportunity to get the ugly or uncomfortable conversation done and dusted. Then you've got three sessions or three contact points there for them to see that you are the person that's going to get them to where they need to be. Okay. I've had other trainers that go, no, no, I'll leave it right to the end and their conversion rate stinks. So you both said start. Yeah. So right. yeah, first session, not first thing, but I definitely do it within, within the first session. And even if they say no, here's the big difference. Even if they say no, I treat everything exactly the same. Exactly. Yep. hundred percent. Richo, what do you exactly do? The same. Oh. Ah, mate, to me, I, I do it on the second session. Okay. So I get to know them first, find out what they, the first session is normally a consult, go through everything they want, goals, details. And the second one's an actual training session. So it's normally at the, at the end of the training session that I present the price because obviously I want to make sure that I know that I can, but I want them to know that I can teach them something. So after I've done the session, I want them to see the value in it first and then I'll show them, and then I show them the package. Because nice. like a lot of people, because a lot of people just think about this, so if they don't know you from a bar. Like I said, it gives me the chance to build rapport at the start. A lot of people just think about this when they don't know you. So for me, I like to get to know them better first, build rapport through the second session, take them for a session, teach them a lot, show them that they need my help. Yep. Why I think they need my help, and then and if they see value in it, that's when I present. So to me, obviously, I feel like as soon as I have a session with me, they're going to see the value. So when I price present. It just, it's already done for me. Nice. Good one. So that's the kickstarts, guys. So kickstarts, super valuable. Um, early in the piece, whether it's first, second or whatever, but just not at the end is the ideal time to, to talk money, price packages, etc. cetera. You, you, you definitely will get taught to do it at the end. And this is probably another episode that we'll just take out and we'll just literally pull these kickstart sessions a bit piece by piece. Now, kickstart is the word that only one company used. Good Life uses that. Well, we use they've, all got, they've all got like boosters, pecs, uh, introductory, complimentary. They've yep. all got different names. Most brands will have a structure that they like to follow. 
for all of them. I'm yet to find one that's truly unreal. Um, I'm, I'm yet to find one that actually is very relatable as well for a trainer who's really serious. Um, so we can probably take these and pull them apart with how we maybe do them in a future episode just to spend the whole episode doing it. Yeah, yeah. And I think what you'll find, or anyone watching this, I think what you'll find is if the three of us put together something like that, uh, especially PTs that have a bit of experience with these, it would be zero fucking scripting. It would be about being a human, making contact with another human, finding out what it is that they need, what you can do to help them achieve that, what the investment's going to be and go ahead and go do it. Right, right. That'd be a good content piece. We could actually make that like yeah. as a, either a video or a written structure or something as to how we would probably do it and why. 100%. Yeah, that's, that'd, well, be that'd be good. That'd be good. We'll park that. We'll come back because um, we need, we need content for our next episode. So, <laughs> but next one. Okay. Uh, and I think this one is more of a challenging uh, aspect or more of a challenging lead generation is on the gym floor. Just something I want to say about that as well is um, a big thing for on the gym floor is just smile. Yeah. Be a nice fucking human to other humans. Oh, you know, bro. You know, at times I've been in the gym and I just say hello to everyone, be friendly. And then I get people come up to me later and start doing sessions with me. And I'm like, oh, what, what made you choose me out of everyone else? And they go, because you're the only one in six months that said hello to me. Yeah, it's fucking crazy, crazy, man. Crazy. Everyone, a lot of trainers get this attitude that they're better than the members or they want to be the most staunchest or this or that. I, I don't understand why people don't smile and talk to each other anymore. Just be a decent human. If yeah. you see someone, smile at them. If they stare at you for a little bit, like a human being, say fucking hello. Yeah, it's not hard. Yeah. Start to make people feel more welcome. Start to be more friendly and watch how many people will start to resonate towards you. Instead of walking around like you're the fucking man with the staunch face on, which is what half the fans do, thinking that you're better than anyone else. Because I tell you right now, you're not. For and anybody listening to this, oh, like just listening to this and not seeing the actual visual, my my visual screen is very bad. I look kind of slightly stoned, but I have the worst, worst resting bitch face in the history of mankind. The worst. I look like I'm forever angry and all the rest of it. But yet, if I see someone random coming in, I'll even morning, hey. What's going on? Morning. See ya. Bye. Just even say it, even if they don't say anything back. You just get in the habit of saying it to every person past. Not because, oh, they're going to give me money, because you don't want to be a fuckwit. Yeah. I got an acronym called D Bash. D B A S H. It stands for don't be a shit human. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and and, and much, much like you just said, Nate, I'm, I'm a big lad. I've got a big, bushy beard. I've got to say hi to people, I've got to show I'm friendly. <laughs> Uh, I, I get misinterpreted quite often. So I go out of my way. I walk the gym floor every day. I remember people's names. If I can't remember their name, I remember something about them so that they don't feel they're just another person. And the amount of times that I get asked for, am I, can I PT? Would, they, you know, would I PT for them? I don't do that now. I'm a club manager and I've got my education side. But, but that does open doors for me to then go and introduce them to our, our team of traders. You know Why? Be nice. Don't be a shit human. Just be friendly and happy. This, like, this is all just stemming from just being a good human, just saying hello to people. Yep. But like Nancy, that's, that, that's from being in the gym and being seen, being seen there every day, spending the time yep. to say hello to people. Start to get to know the members. Mm. Start the, it doesn't have to lead anywhere. It's it doesn't. Make you nervous. No, 100%. Just, and I think that's where we're going to get with this is generating leads from the gym floor needs to be about being a good person, helping out the members that are there, and, and not going out with that expectation, playing the slow, long game, because it's got to pay off. And, and this all comes back to like what we said about having money in the bank before you start. Because yep. when you've got that money That's there, fun. you're able to be in this mind frame, you're able to be in this mindset and be relaxed like that. And that's when it's going to come. When you don't have that bank behind you that's when you're going to be looking at every single person like a dollar sign like fuck i need to talk to them i need to sign up that person and yeah. just creates that and follows on from that so again just comes to like we talked about in the last episode having money in the bank so you're not stressing like that and you're able to be relaxed and just be a decent human and that's where it comes from from there so let's say yeah, let's say you've, you've done your time sorry uh, no, let's say you've no, you go your first mate go on go let's on say you, let's say you've walked the gym floor You've created these relationships. People know you're a friendly dude. People know you take care of your, your clients. Uh, you've opened up some conversations. How do you then turn it from friendly guy on the gym floor conversation to prospective client conversation? 
Nate, what's your, how do you flip the combo? <laughs> I'll, I'll tell an exact story here of uh, one of my clients, Rory. Uh, I've had Rory for a, a good while now. I do all his programming and everything else. Rory is a former PT himself. The way I got Rory as a client is I was training at the time myself and I was resting and I will literally do this. I'll just walk and I'll stand near someone doing a lift out of their eye line so they can do it. But I'll be there so when they're done, I'll congratulate them. Like that was solid. Or you should do this next time or do that. Like I'll just be there because they know that I've been around. I'll just give them some kind of encouragement or say something because no one really will. Yep. Anyway, Rory was doing like 160 on a sumo and it was shit. Like it was, but it's, and I told him, I said, if you did what you, if you did this, like you did at the start, you would have got all those reps. You should do it again. Cause that was pretty shit. Yeah, and good. you know, it was shit too. Yeah. Five minutes later, he comes up and he says, Hey, I'm looking at someone doing my program and stuff. And we had a bit of a ch chat. I talked to him a bit longer the next day and signed him up. He was sold within the first five minutes. Now, yes, I get that's a bit aggressive, but that's also my style. If yep. you know me, every second word is fuck. I'm a little bit arrogant arrogant but i care a lot yep like so i'm not gonna go over there to, to make him feel bad <laughs> go you yeah, shit i can do better than you no i went over to say i know you can do better because i've seen you do better yeah step it up be accountable good like that's i will approach certain things like hey do you want to hey do you want a spot do you like do you want a hand yep. do you want me to watch you um or how did that feel Oh yeah, it looked pretty good. I reckon this rep you dropped that. Did you feel that? Yeah, cool. And walk away. I won't just automatically offer stuff. Yep. I have a process for that that's a bit more aggressive. I don't tend to use it mainly because I don't need to, and I don't think a lot of unconfident PTs need to hear it. Yep. Yep. No, I got you on that. That's a, that's a level thing we just spoke about earlier. So that's down the track conversation as we get. Yeah, but that's my yep. style, right? Yep, like yep. I am, like Richie and I. We we only haven't worked together for a few months in the gym and it's freaking terrible because it's uh, we love working together yeah. but he will say the same thing like i'm so <laughs> fucking loud <laughs> i don't realize how loud i am but no one will tell me to shut up because you know what i'll tell them to do yeah. trying to fuck off because <laughs> it's what i do with my people i'm not purposely trying to yell it's just my personality yeah and you i'm know all hands voice i'm all bark no bite but that's how I get my people and that's why they stay around. Yeah, good, good. What about you, Richo? Um, well, for me, like I was talking about now, a lot of the time it goes back to, like we're talking about with a niche thing. Like for me, I have niches that I want to work with. So if I'm one of those people where if I don't think I can help you, if I'm not the best PT for you, I'll recommend other PTs. Yep. I'm, not too, yeah. I'm not too fucking proud to say, hey, I don't know anything about that. You should go and see this guy. So for me, a lot of times, I'll sort of, in my head, once you start to get to know people and you start to talk to people as a, as a human, you get to find out what they're doing. So a lot of times, if I'm talking to guys and I find out that they play sport, then I know that's something I can help them be better at. Mm -hmm. So I'll go up and be like, what's your training like? And then I'll, then I'll just go, look, do you mind if I give you a complimentary session and take you out through? I think that, you will get better results from training. And then I approach it like that because that's the sort of person I know I can help. I'm not going to go up to someone who's doing CrossFit and be like, ah, I could make you make you snatch heavy in that because yep. that's a blatant lie. I that's don't know anything thing. about that. I'm not going to go up to someone on the treadmill and be like, ah, I know how to run 42 gauge. You should listen to me about running. I don't, that's not my thing. And I'm not going to tell them that I can do that. Then go home and give them a Google program. I try and obviously figure out who I can relate to and who I can help the most. And that's normally who I'll sort of, talk to about that on the gym floor. But again, that's just being a decent human and finding out why they're training for what they're doing. And if I think I'm the best person to help them, then I'll offer them a complimentary session. Yep. But if I don't think I'm the best person, I'm not going to say that, yeah, I can do that or yeah, I can help you with that. Yep. When I can't. Exactly that not being in desperation mode. Now, now yeah. Richard, curious man, do you use the word complimentary? Do you use that? Do you say, oh, let me give yeah. you a complimentary session? Yeah. yeah cool. Yeah. yeah. I say complimentary. Good. I yeah, use just, it too. I just, I just, I, because I want to give them a complimentary session. And if they, the reason why I do that is because I want to give them a session to show them that I can add value. And if they don't think that they can get value from that session, then, or they, at the end of that session, they don't think that they got the value from that, then that's okay with me. But mm -hmm. I know 
that I can add value. So to me, it's complimentary and then they know after that that they're going to get something from it. So that's why they want to stay on. Yeah, good. I use I it too. I love the word compliment. I use it too. And you know what? There might be a better word to use, but you know the reason why we use it? Because we're so confident in our abilities that the word complimentary doesn't phase us. We're not looking that yep. far into it. We don't have to. There's no yep. point. And you know why we don't have to? Because the, the amount, and this is, this is where a lot of PTs, this is where the time comes in. This will come. This is not a rat on. This is a, you will get this when you get there. The amount of actual under the bar experience that we have mm. individually, as, as all three of us, let alone combined, is the reason why we're good at what we do. Yep. We know the mistakes you're going to make before you make them. Mm. We know what is going on in your head when you're doing that squat at that weight because you've never done it before and what you're going to run into. Yep. Like you literally hear Richo and I preempt things that are going to fall. Now, what you're going to find is that we're doing five reps. What you're going to find by rep three is this is going to go down. Yep. So only focus on that. Oh shit, you were right. Rep three, this fucking happened. Like, because we know. Yep. We've done it all. We fucked up far more than you ever will so you can be successful. Yeah. This is exactly that's what makes how to fall a squat bar. <laughs> yeah, that's what makes us good coaches. And yeah. other and you will you as a PT will get like that. Mm. But you can't get that quickly. You need time for that. You need to learn from people. You need to consistently be doing stuff all the time. Your own training, listening to how other people coach, that whole immersion thing of being there, that factors all into the way you do your sales and and get new clients mm. there's just an aura of confidence that's just there not because we turn it on yeah because we've done it for so long yeah, it just becomes auto was it the franco um uh richo that said for every hour on the books you should be doing 10 in the gym yeah, if, yeah. maybe i didn't get the numbers exactly right but that was the sentiment right so yeah. you can learn and study and, and understand stuff but you've got to be under that bar you've got to be in there you've got to be feeling it you've got to be doing it, testing on yourself but also on your clients or your buddies or You've got to be in there. You've got to be within the practice that you want to practice. Yep. Like, I'm not athletic. I don't. People come to me and be like, how can I produce more power? Fuck, I don't know. Go see Richo. <laughs> I don't even fucking care about your abs and your biceps. Like, don't, I don't but do they, that shit. So you guys get, you guys understand from working with each other, you guys understand that that in itself creates a higher level of respect for you as a PT because they understand that you're willing to hand it over because you know you're, your, your, your strengths and you know what's not your strength and then you can sit there and make the most of it. Therefore, yeah, they're not going to waste time. It's a level thing too. Like as a newbie, you're yeah. probably going to fake it till you make it, right? And I mean, a lot of people fake it till they make it and find something totally new that they love. Yeah. So I'm all, I'm all go for it. Just be safe and if you fake it till you make it, then go and do your research. Yeah, yeah that's right. But, yeah. but at the same time, if there's something that you genuinely know you have no interest in or that you're not good at, pass them on. Yeah. Because, but not, not only not only does it create more rapport between you and the, your colleagues, but it, it shows the client or the, the, the person that you actually give a shit about their goals. Yep. You actually want them to achieve what they want to achieve because you're passing to the best person possible. You're not just trying to take their cash. And you know, how does that, how does that resonate with their, in their community? Man, I joined this gym. I had this trainer. They didn't know what I, they, they weren't really comfortable training what I wanted. They passed me to this other trainer who I'm getting excellent results with rather than I feel like a piece of meat that's getting tossed between PTs. We've heard that. We've seen that where the, the PTs are jostling for clients and the clients are getting thrown around the place. If they understand that all the PTs are on the same page, which is to get their clients better results, then they're going to refer more business to the gym. They're going to bring in more friends. You're going to have a more opportunity to close people, et cetera, et cetera. I think, yeah, I also think you'll have some trainers that'll definitely do that. That'll hustle and jostle and do whatever they have to do. Sure. And eventually that will come back and get them in some kind of way. But for the most part, in any environment that you're in, everybody wants everybody else to do well. Cause often more often than not, it means you do well. Like if the gym has an overflow of members, often the trainers are busy and like, like it kind of trickles down like the rising tide raises all boats kind of deal. Yeah, yeah. I think you'll, you'll often find that. Hmm. So we've got, We've got a fair bit of content there on the kickstarts or the, or the welcome packs or intro packs, whatever you guys are going to call it. It depends on the facility. The, the, the floor one, man, I reckon we could spend an hour on it, but the basic simple steps to that is be a good human, go out of your way to help people, 
pass on your knowledge through your personality type without trying to overstep your mark, yeah? Yeah. When you get when you get that conversation opportunity, just like dating, don't be scared to then ask for the number. You know, once you've once you've established that there is some sort of commonality, once you've shown that you do have their best interest, you can't just become the friend zone. Then you've got to say, listen, let me give you a complimentary session. Let me take you through some steps. Yeah, just just the basic fundamentals of utilize the services that you're in the gym for anyway, because you want the leads. Yep. You want the lead systems. Be there all the time. Make the mistakes. And then obviously, like we said, you got to start caring about their results as much as we do. And I think for I think that took that part as bad as it sounds took the longest for me to get. Yeah. Like I cared, but the level of care and influence I have now is way better than I had before. And I think a lot of people organically get, got that a lot better than I did early on. Yeah. Like, like I, I think that was my biggest struggle is the whole being involved as much as I wanted to be involved and, and just finding a level of care for their results that I never had before. Yeah, right. And that's, and that's, what this for. Oh, Sorry, like, sir. that's exactly what this podcast is for. We're not here sitting here going, oh, we're better than you. Rah, rah. All we're trying to do is tell you where we went wrong and just try and help teach you from the mistakes that we've made so that you don't have to make them. That's mm -hmm. like when Nate talks about it like this, he's not talking about it to brag. We're talking about it and we're saying, don't, don't do what we did. Yeah. Like, and we're trying to tell you what works for us the best now so that hopefully you can try and emulate and get to the same level as well. But we're trying to help you avoid the mistakes that we've made, which we've all made in our time. Yep. So, Mooney? 100%, man. Um, good, a good little reminder there, Richo, that that is what this is about. It's us sharing our experiences, both good and bad, so that you can learn from it and make less of the bad and more of the good, yeah? Right, so initial kickstart packs, Floor walking, what other uh, opportunities for lead generation are out there? Uh, I don't like, we could probably end on this next one unless Richo's got a better one. Um, referrals. Good one, yep. 100%. Yeah, it's, Richo, is that, is that a good one to end on? Uh, I'll throw one more in the mix before you go with referrals because referrals probably one of the biggest main ones. This is just another one again when we're talking about the commercial settings. So you've got another two lists. So what we talked about was one was the birthdays. I think we're pretty sure we covered it in the accountability spreadsheet. One was the yep. birthdays and one was the <laughs> full attendance. Files. So yep. while we're talking about a commercial setting and lead gen, this is definitely one of them and it can definitely work because you set it up the same as their kickstarts. You're calling them up for their birthday or you're calling them up because they haven't been in. You offer them a complimentary session and then it's, it should just play out the same as when you do the kickstarts and when you do the intro patch at the start. Yep. But that's just another way of lead gen that you have. If you if the gym's low on intros and you've been walking the floor and you want to fill some more time with that as well, then you can go to your facility, ask for the birthday list, ask for the falling stars list, which is just a list of people that haven't been to the gym in lately in the, much in the last four to eight weeks. Yep. So you're always giving them a call to find out if everything's okay and see if you can restart their training for them. And then you're offering complimentary sessions from there. So again, just another way to get in front of people to help people and then from helping people um, profit on the back end of that by turning them into clients. Um, that's probably the other one. The other one, the only other one apart from obviously what Nate's going to lead us into, which is probably one of the biggest and best ones. Yep. Yeah. Sweet. I you're think well. referrals take time because you can't just go off the manual script of, hey, do you, they teach this and it's so fucked. If anyone's got a client off this, message me and I'll send you money. <laughs> like literally. Like I don't know who's ever got a client like something like, oh, hey, Jane, do you have any other friends that would be interested in getting the results that you're getting? Question mark, smiley face. <laughs> Fuck. Like it just doesn't work. The whole referral thing, you can definitely ask for referrals. I don't think there's any problem in doing so. Like along the lines of, hey, blah, 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 blah. blah. I've just had some openings and I like, you know, you've been getting some really good results and I know you said you had some friends that were having some problems with this. Do you mind me getting their number or do you mind getting them to give me a call and that I can get together and see if I can help them out too? As an example, that's a shitty script, but you get the idea, right? Yeah. It's a completely different way of going about it because I'm using information they've already given me. But often 
you'll get people that are like, hey, I've got this friend that wants to do like this goal. Um, do you mind if I, if I give them your number? Yeah, sure. Why don't you just give me their number and I'll just give them a call, save them the hassle. Yep. Along those lines. I think it takes time to get to that level. Yeah, I think like confidence I've, in your in your in your. I've had more person. referrals as clients in the last two years than I've had in the previous ten. Like I think it just takes time to get to that level. Again, I'm slow. Like I'm really slow, and people definitely get it quicker than I do. But the referral thing, I think, only comes off the back of confidence that you provided that client with a result. Yep. You don't get to ask or get a referral if you aren't keeping that client happy with the service or with the results they get. Mm. But like they are mutually exclusive. And I think that's another podcast in itself because some clients will train with you just to train with you and they don't give a fuck about the result. That's yeah, and, and you know what? On, on the referral thing there is, it can't be a, I've just done my session. I need a new client. Hey, I need a referral. You've got to plant that seed. You've got to, you've got to, you've got to like work that angle for quite some time. So, you know, it could be as simple as when they first get started. Oh, so who'd you get started with? Do you have any friends that train here at the gym? And just bank that information. And then you train them for a few weeks or a couple of days or whatever time frame you're working on. And then you might drop it in again. I'll say, how's your training gone? Has anyone noticed that you've been getting some results? Oh, who's that? Cool. Are they a member here? Are they doing any training? No, bank it. You know what I'm saying? And you just build rapport and you understand what's going on. And you might get to a point there where you have a bunch of clients that you've had these conversations with. And then you might go, guess what I'm doing next week? I want to show all your mates how good your results are and how hard you train. Bring a friend along for free. They've already started to think about the friend because you've spoken to them about their friend who's asked questions who should be training and hasn't come to the gym because they're lazy or what have you. They can come along and join in a gym a, a PT session. That's one way of doing it. You can start a little small team session or you can just straight out ask for it at that point. But it's got to be over time. I don't think you can just sit there and go, today's lead gen day. I'm going to ask all my clients for a, a one or two the, months today. The, the, the only way that works, and I have used this and this has worked, is if you've got, if you're starting out, You've got five to 10 clients. D depends as well what you put on the value of a new client because a lot of times as well, where everyone's busy, you have any people that, oh, I can't really think. You, they have to have incentive to really dig into, oh, you know what, I actually do know someone who could benefit from this. So one of the ones that you can do at the start is, obviously it depends on your demographic. If you're training women in their, 40, in their 40s, you're not gonna put up an iPad as the gift or the, the prize, but what you can do is a prize. So depending on your demographic, it might be a $500 flight center voucher. It might be a new iPad. It might be a weekend away for two at the Star Casino with um, dinner included. So what you do is go, hey guys, I'm running a referral competition. This is the prize. So it might be a $500 flight center gift voucher. The, whoever refers me the most people that do a minimum 12 week block with me, at the end of say two weeks or four weeks, however long you want to give them to find you someone, wins this prize. So, because sometimes people are just lazy, they need an incentive to actually go and, yeah, and when they actually think about it, when they actually think about it, they might have someone who could benefit from your training. So sometimes that incentive is enough for them to really think about who do they, who do they have that could help benefit them, um, and kick that on. So when you're first starting, if you're only on ten or whatever, and like we said, it takes time to get referrals. That can be a way and you know that you're not going to lose money because obviously your condition is that they have to do a 12 week block with you. So unless you're charging less than $40 a session for the 12 week block, you won't be losing out. So worst case scenario is you might break even or you make $500 from that person for if they only did the bare minimum. But obviously you're, you're betting that you can keep them going for the 12 weeks you're going to get results from that person. And then that becomes another tool that you can use as a refer referral because that's another person you've changed. So to me, at the start, like we said, the referrals where you're just getting them off the bat like that for nothing takes time. Took me 10 years. Taking me, about, taking me about eight years. But that is something that I've used in the past that has worked well for me because some people just need an incentive to find that person. And think about the demographic you have. Mm -hmm. Do you mean if you've got all young single people, you're not going to have the prizes a weekend getaway for two to the Sunshine Coast where it's quiet? Do you mean it's going to be a $500 flight center voucher for them to travel the world? It's going to be an iPad or it's going to something of that. 
that's yeah. that's look it's worked for me um and i definitely saw value in it and can still see value in it for someone who's starting when you're not going to get the referrals from doing the time already and a bit of cream on that approach with that incentivized referral approach is especially now in 2018 there's some cool content you can create as a result of that there's some cool stuff you can put on your social of the excitement generated around the comp and when they win their prize and what they go do with it it's that's cool i like that idea richard that's a pretty good one um that a lot of gyms do um but not many pts would do it i, I imagine so that's a pretty uh different approach and most most likely worthwhile of that investment of the five odd hundred dollars yeah yeah definitely and like i said and that was just the example of Jimmy. You know, that's if you just get one yeah. that's just from everyone you go to only everyone only refers to one person yeah. You know I mean? So if you get people that really get into it, you might get one from three people and two from someone else. All of a sudden now you've got five new sessions. Yep. Or five new clients. They might be, might be doing multiple sessions. So that's the worst case scenario is you get in one. And obviously there's the provisors, obviously don't buy the prize until you finish the challenge in case yeah. no yeah. one refers. Then you're not stuck with a $500 voucher or a $500 iPad that you can't return. Yep, yep. But, you know what you're going to get and you offer that as the prize. So that way, again, you're not out of pocket, yep. but another, another way to lead Jim. Nice one. So and, and referrals is always a, um, a trust and rapport and results, uh, a, a thing, right? So uh, you can't just go out there and expect it because you're a, a, a nice person. At some stage you are going to need to back up uh, your, your business and you're going to have to produce those results. So people do want to go speak about it. Right. And that's the other thing. If you're doing everything right with referrals, that's like we've heard Richo, that's an incentivized referral approach. Mine was a, um, a targeted over a period of time referral approach. You know, and the other one is, um, you know, we go back to before, be a good human. If you're a good human and you're generating a good results and you're giving a lot of time, effort and care to your clients, they're going to refer people to you anyway. And I think that's where Nate was getting at before that it's taken a few years to get there, but that's where the majority of uh, your business comes from, Nate. Now, yeah, now it is. Now, yeah. it, now it, it doesn't run solely off referrals, but I get enough people that, di that dish out numbers and people that get in contact and it doesn't always work out. You're not going to go 100%, but they're definitely, in the grand scale of lead quality, they're definitely going to be up there because they're people who have asked, they've expressed an interest. You're already working with somebody they clearly know. The referrals. They definitely sold. know what they're probably in for money-wise because they've already fucking asked. Yep. So it's really a matter of, can I help them? Can they do this, this, and this, and then go going from there? Love it. So definitely, I mean, guys um, that are watching this or, or soon to be listening to it, um, reach out to us if you want to get a bit of an idea. You know, we've discussed the intro packs. We've discussed walking the floor. We're now talking about the referrals. Um, we talked about earlier, I think we could definitely do some content and break each three of these things down and, and, and present it in a way that you just can't fuck it up. Um, yep. You. And on that note, I think we're done. Awesome, yep. boys. Thanks for your time, fellas. Absolutely, as always. Thanks, Mooney. We'll Thanks, Richo. Thanks, we'll have this out on uh, Friday night. All right, absolutely. I'll talk to you boys next week. Sweet, Jen. Okay. See ya.